This is the Mark Davis Show on 660 AM. The answer for years. Management here at KSKY waited for our competition to screw up. Then one morning, we arrived at work to find a gift wrap package from them laying on our front doorstep. We were excited. We opened it. Out popped Mark Davis. We wasted no time in signing in to work for us. His 18 years of radio history in Dallas Fort Worth goes on. You are about to live it. Mark Davis is now right here on 660 AM. The answer. It is our third and final hour here on this Tuesday, October 30th, 2012. Mike Gallagher show next hour and thereafter. Quite the day left to unfold from the Dennis Prager show from noon to two. Michael Medved, two to five. John David Wells, five to eight. And we're in the midst of a, a pretty wide ranging discussion about the election and the weather and how, uh, how they affect each other, I guess, as we plow toward an election that one presumes will still be held uh, next Tuesday. There is a, an issue that arises every once in a while, and I'm always glad to, to cover it because I'm fascinated by it. it. On the list of things like, what is it about black America that votes like 90% Democrat? What's that about? What is it about female America that votes decidedly Democrat, why is that? Along to answer that question and address it and try to change it is a woman I've had the pleasure of hanging out with in, in a number of places, uh, at, at lunches, at events, at things, Republican-type things. You're going to run into Debbie Georgiatos, and it's always a pleasure. She's had an interesting life from New York to California to D.C. to Texas, from a, uh, an employment litigation attorney to a wife and stay-at-home mother of three, and now to author. Look at her. It's called Ladies Can We? We talk. America needs our vote. Like It's one thing for me to sit here and talk to all women and say how insulting this war on women thing is to you, or that when you talk about women's issues, that must just be about you know abortion and contraception, like y'all don't care about the economy. But it's just better if it comes from Debbie. So let's do that. Debbie, welcome. How are you? Very well. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me on. It is my absolute pleasure. So let's go to the base coat issue, is there a reason, a single reason, or are there many, why women tend to decidedly, and they will next week, vote Democrat? I have read a lot of studies of what Democrat women say about why they vote that way. I would distill it down to basic ideas of women vote Democrat because they are attempting to make society more fair, and they see voting for large social spending as a compassionate thing to do. I was surprised in my study uh, of all of the data about voting to learn that really the uh, pro-choice and pro-life issue does not drive any significant segment of the, of the women voters. It really boils down to compassion and fairness in their, or their view of what compassion and fairness is. So that's one of my central ideas in the book is that if you look at where we are today as a society in America, the most compassionate thing, the most fair thing to do for everyone is to vote to strengthen our economy, vote to strengthen the, the, our culture by lifting people out of the depressing and awful government assistance programs that truly haven't worked. It is misplaced compassion to continue to vote for those things that haven't really helped. But then we're off on a compelling foot immediately because I've walked around with these theories in my head and I've almost felt sexist for holding them, that women Women vote Democrat because they associate uh, you know, largesse of government with compassion and caring, and that's where the maternal nurturing instinct is. I don't believe that 70% of women are pro-choice, not by a long shot. That's what makes this war on women so insulting. Half of American women agree with limitations on abortion and are, agree with Rick Santorum on stuff. Uh, so if we go to the psychology of women, and there are differences between men and women, thank God for that, and there is a, a nurturing and compassion passion um, uh, passion there, then what we've got to do, if I'm understanding you correctly, is is rewire the way we think about compassion and the way we think about truly caring for the needy and, and caring for those who need it. Not through the Rube Goldberg devices of government, but through empowering the economy, through, through free markets, and through real people caring for other real people. Exactly. One thing I mentioned in the book that I just um, really wish more people knew all around America is that we already are the most generous nation on earth. We are generous to each other, other um, our fellow Americans, and generous to people around the world. And there was a wonderful book written by Arthur Brooks, 
and he talked about, it's called Who Really Cares? He talks about who actually does all this bountiful charity that America is so famous for. And he really po- he points out that after many, many studies, it turns out the people who are the most giving, caring in terms of money, time, even donating blood, are conservatives, Christians, people who oppose redistribution of wealth. The generosity is really not evenly spread among the American citizenry. And I think that that, that behavior of being the generous uh, Americans that we are is consistent with a worldview that sees government has a limited role. It needs to do its limited role well, and people need to care for each other, and people do care for each other in our country. And also about the compassion that people try to express to government assistance programs. You know, if you look at the what we've spent since the beginning of the Great Society till now, it's about $16 trillion we have transferred from the taxpayers to recipients of all the government assistance programs. And we have more poverty, higher numbers and higher percentages than when we started. And so I think there's just a pragmatic proof that it doesn't work to really alleviate poverty. And the other very significant thing women should care about in terms of this war on uh, on poverty that was uh, begun under President Johnson was that it's had terrible impact on families and on children. So if you really are a compassionate, nurturing woman and you want all children to grow up in a home where they are, where there is the, the greatest potential of parents on hand and, and a, um, a stable family, we need to stop supporting the programs that have destroyed the family. Part of your appeal to women in the pages of Ladies Can We Talk and go to ladieskanwetalk.org and, and go and meet Debbie and she'll sign a book and talk about its content at Barnes & Noble Sundance Square Fort Worth this Saturday, 3 to 5. Barnes & Noble, November 3rd, this Saturday, 3 to 5 in the afternoon, Barnes & Noble at Sundance Square. Debbie George Addo's Ladies Can We Talk is to appeal to women's pride and say, don't be pigeonholed. Don't let the Democratic Party take your vote for granted. Don't, don't fall victim to some stereotype that says, if you're a woman, you simply must vote Democrat. Yes, in fact, I want to respond to something you mentioned a few minutes ago about the today's Democrat Party, what their pitch is to women. I think it is insulting to women. The idea that women's votes can be bought by promising free birth control, by promising free female-related health care. Women are not are more noble than that. Women want to vote for a great America, a great American future, a state economy, economic opportunity, jobs for themselves, jobs for their kids, stabilizing of our of our debt and reduction of our debt. Women are bigger thinkers than Democrats give them credit for. And I think it's an insulting to women to suggest that that they can be bought, their votes can be bought by promises of the free birth control. Uh, that is the um, Sandra Fluke argument. I should mention, Mark, I happen to also go to Georgetown Law School, and I often wish I could have a debate with Sandra Fluke. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd pay money for that. I'd pay money to see that. And because she set womanhood back 30 years, this notion that we are driven by the availability of contraception paid for by other people. Really? Silly me. I thought women cared about the economy, cared about liberty, cared about what kind of country that we're going to, to leave for our children. The book, Debbie, is 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 intended as a conversation starter. Its title, Ladies Can We Talk, suggests that. So what would you like women, conservative women, to do? Uh, they, I guarantee you listening right now are conservative women with liberal friends. They gather at lunch. They do this. And sometimes they throw out their hands and they go, oh, we'll, we'll never, you know, retrieve Betty or, you know, Mildred's a lost cause or, or you know, Charlene, well, she just is what she is. I, let, let's no, 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 no. How do you start that conversation? in an attempt to, to, uh, to convert? You know, I agree that we have to have those conversations. And it is really, women are great talkers. Is one reason I named the book that, and one reason I advocate for this is we can be the foot soldiers for America's future economy, America's future freedom in our conversations. For example, in its close of most of the chapters in the book, Ladies, Can We Talk? America Needs Our Vote, there's a did you know list. And those are great conversation starters, people saying, gosh, the Republicans don't care about the poor. Well, did you know that? And then you can share a statistic, share a fact. And there are footnotes right in there to point people to be able to look these things up themselves. I think that questions are a good start to conversation, asking people, did they know certain facts about the economy, spending, what we really spend, how far we are in debt. The book is just filled with facts. Another thing that is really uh, important in women's conversations is 
conservatives tend to think in facts and logic and outlines, and liberals tend to think more emotionally and reason more emotionally. So I think that we need to, sh- to sell or share conservative ideas by telling stories, by telling stories about the actual impact on real humans by, uh, of the system we cho- of government we choose at the voting booth. I include numerous stories of women's lives throughout this book, and their lives have been just blessed and helped and uplifted by our free market system. One is a woman who came here, she actually grew up under Mao Zedong in China, and she is just ecstatic about the free market system. She's become successful as an entrepreneur here, and she just is amazed that there are American women who don't value that and don't want in every way they can to support it. And there are other women's stories told throughout the book, too, that just that help make the point that women and everyone prosper better under an abundant and, and robust free market system, which is really what the Republicans support and the Democrat Party has been, in my sense, attacking. So get conversation going by did you knows and by sharing stories. All right. Debbie G is in the house and in Barnes and Noble on Saturday, Sunday at Square, Saturday, November three from three to five p.m. But go to Amazon and you can find it. Ladies, can we talk? Uh, go to ladies, can we talk dot org and you can find it. Debbie Georgiatis's offer to step into society and take women gently by the shoulders and say, hey, what are you doing here? Don't just be default Democrats. Debbie, it's, it's always great to see you. I know I will in some room soon. Congratulations on this. I'm, I'm very, very proud of you, and I just love you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on. It is ladieskenwetalk.org, the website for the book. And it really is, listen, I mean, I'm a dude. I loved it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a really good political book containing all kinds. In fact, uh, the greatest compliment I can offer is you can actually take this book designed to tell, you know, liberal women how to get better. Uh <laughs> And, 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 and use it as a, as a bolstering element for, for how to get anybody hip to the, the greatness that is conservatism.